You know what? I didn't vote for the guy. That's all I can say, but I can tell you that everywhere around the world, people are dumbfounded, they don't get it, they don't understand what's going on, and history will not be kind. And speaking of voting, we have up Shahid Batar. He's a congressional candidate running against Nancy Pelosi. Hello, Nancy Pelosi, where are you? So without further ado, please welcome Mr. Shahid Batar. Close the camps. Close, close the camps. Say it with me now. Close the camps. Close, close the camps. I can mean it. Close the camps. Close, close the camps. Louder. Close the camps. Close, close the camps. One more time. Close the camps. Close, close the camps. I see here, looking out at this crowd, a remarkably diverse and beautiful spectrum of our beautiful and very proudly committed city. And I see, looking out at that spectrum of humanity, an inexorable victory for the principles that draw us together, even if the time that we are living in now puts those principles in crisis. I want to particularly pay homage to the speaker before me, Brother Raphael, and Fabian as well. I'm, I'm going to jump on a few of their comments. I want to briefly, though, be the mosquito in the net and just suggest that at the same time that we must celebrate our movements, we have to be real with each other, y'all. And I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. We can't simply claim that all of our elected officials show up for our struggles. One reason we have to be here is because our federal representative in Washington gave four and a half billion dollars to an aspiring tyrant to build concentration camps on our nation's borders. I'm glad that our city officials showed up today to show solidarity with we immigrants. I am an immigrant. I appreciate their solidarity and I appreciate yours. I find it entirely unacceptable that our federal representative has abandoned the very same human rights principles that our nation once proudly fought a world war to establish. And on the subject of our abuses in other countries, people understand that abuses are intersectional, yes? Yes. People understand that the migration crisis at the southern border is being driven by a drought in Central America, a climate chaos driven drought. And just to unpack a few agencies that get let off the hook with respect to that. Three generations ago, a war consumed the whole world. What for? Millions died from Tokyo to Warsaw, but that is not the worst that our species saw. The world's worst criminals, they built an agency, an engine for crimes against humanity, invasions, assassinations, coups d'etat and independent foreign nations paved the way for human rights violations, murdering priests, raping nuns, mining harbors, killing sons, embezzling funds, bribery, oil extraction. Each war served to enrich a different faction, but in action always winning, the executives of oil and weapons companies grinning with their hair thinning yet trying to live forever their greed Pay deserts, forests, mountains, whatever stood in the way of their conquest together. Today, we fear the weather. Every year, it's more brutal. People are dying in wildfires. Others eat strudel. Climate chaos was contrived by a feudal mercantilist imperial agenda. Wars for profit turning rivers magenta are basically Wall Street trashing the rental. Each era's crimes compound those unresolved. Murder mysteries and mass unsolved is called history. Studying can solve our cycles of oppressions we need to evolve. In 50 years, the CIA built an empire. The fears of a planet on a fuel pyre burn. Fossil fuels drive the temperature higher, melt the ice caps, dry the glaciers. Habitat destruction, species erasure, driven by the insatiable greed of a culture that lacks vegetables. Meat for every meal is unsustainable, but that is what Wall Street puts on your table. Driven by lies, constructing false tables from the Pentagon Papers to the WikiLeaks tables. Remember, after Nixon went down, the lies continued later. Reagan's legacy was creating Al-Qaeda. The CIA trained them. A parade of corruption. Afghanistan to Nicaragua. Army rebels from Kabul to Managua, not just to wage rogue foreign policy, but eventually to bring home a calamity. The CIA's crimes against humanity include mass incarceration. Here's the plan, see? Run drugs into LA and Miami. 
armed traffickers, spark a war in the streets that kills police, then blame it on a crime wave and jail a generation of slaves. Each era's crimes compound those unresolved. Murder mysteries and mass unsolved is called history. Study and can solve our cycles of oppressions we need to evolve. So drug war, military police, investing in prisons instead of universities, these are the predictable fruits of impunity for violence abuses of communities from Pacific Islands that will simply cease entirely to be, to hurricanes killing people in Haiti, to collateral damage that Intel is always shoddy, to 3,000 people killed in NYC. That's what we see of the CIA's legacy of ashes. We're talking about imperial fascists, imported war from abroad to police. Frederick Douglass saw the cycle complete just like MLK and Eisenhower hate of state. The hate we see today rising is reprising decades of terror. Remember the KKK that the CIA exported everywhere, in every way from drone strikes, killing babies today to wars, for new soil to plunder more oil, ensuring that our only planet will continue to boil, boil the plot. It is the only chance we've got. The only chance we have for a solution is to overcome and close these institutions. We can do it y'all together. Yeah. See through the illusions by the Shah. Give it up for Shaheen, folks. I want to start by saying very clearly, and I think that I'm preaching to the choir when I say this, that no human being is illegal. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. My name is John Jacobo, and I'm a Cairo and I'm a proud member of this coalition. We've been working hard for three months. Everybody collectively has been doing what they need to do to make today's turnout great, but it does not end today because our struggle will not stop until all of these children are free and until all our families are treated with the dignity that they deserve. And so on that note, I have three announcements to make and then we are gonna close this out as we start it off. Number one, to my right, one of our lead organizers, AJ, with his two hands up, is gonna be, give it up for AJ. He's going to be leading a coalition to Nancy Pelosi's office to drop off a list of policy demands that our collective group work with and work on. So AJ will be able to take you with him. I'll be going that way. To my left, Don, where are you, Don? Let me see them hands. Right back there. Look at that beautiful bunch. They're going to be going to Senator Feinstein's office to do the exact same thing. They didn't, they didn't come here, so we're going to go there. We're going to make sure they know what we want. And finally, not this coming Tuesday, but the Tuesday after, we will be meeting again at 2969 Mission Street at the Answer Coalition to begin our next action that will be taking at 6 p.m. Oh, see, man, I'm, I'm all kinds of announcements. Now, tonight is 6. At 2969, we will be 24th Commission tonight at 6 p.m. 2 4. We will be on the corner and we'll be there together, so show up for that. Now, finally, I would like to close this out with our one and only brother that sings better than nobody else in the struggle. And come on in, folks, come closer. Pretend like y'all know each other, man. Come here. Go closer, go closer. I promise. We, we have a lot of passion, but it's not against you. Come close, come close. Right here. Right on, All right, folks, I want to close this out how we started off. I want to give it up for our man, Francisco right Herrera.